Yo, what is up guys, Ultra Balls back with another SPL game. Uh, today we have an Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon OU game between my man BTB and Poek. Um, so yeah, I don't think we have a team preview for this, but I'm just going to go quickly over the teams and then we'll just hop right in. I actually know BTB's team and I know all the sets, so I could fill you guys in. Uh, but Poek, obviously I don't know uh, his team exactly, but uh, yeah, okay, so BTB's team, it's Specs Keldeo with um, Fireium Z Heatran with like Taunt and Stealth Rock. Banded Zygarde, AV, uh, Bulu, uh, Scarf Kartana, and some shit defensive Zapdos without Heat Wave, so it can't even be Kartana, but yeah. Uh, that is BTB's call on that one. Uh, this is, Specs Keldeo, though, does have HP Poison for Bulu. So look at this Keldeo, and look, have you ever seen Specs Keldeo have a better matchup than this one? Because <laughs> Poex only switching is Bulu, and there is the HP Poison on that just for the uh, AV Bulu. The thing is, like, it doesn't Oko, but if you catch them one time with HP Poison, then it's not going to be able to switch into you for the rest of the game. You could just... Like, in this game, the Water Resist is Greninja, so if he's able to HP Poison the Bulu one time, then BTB could just spam Scald and get a kill every single time, pretty much. Uh, on Poex's side, he's got a Mega Mawile squad. Mega Mawile is definitely scary for BTB. Uh, the one switch is Heatran, but the Heatran doesn't have leftovers, and if Poek doesn't play rough the Heatran, if it, like, if, po if he clicks Thunder Punch, Knock Off, whatever other move it has to hit Heatran, then, I mean, it's only going to be able to switch in the one time anyway. And like I said, there's no recovery for the Heatran, so it's going to rely on the Bulu a little bit to try and stay healthy. Uh, Reuniclus looks like the biggest threat to BTB, I would say. Uh, just, it, especially, well, it depends on the set, right? So, like, Reuniclus, the most standard one you'd see in OU, some sort of, like, Calm Mind Recover, uh, with either Z-Move or... Reuni could either be Z-Move, or it could be Lefties, but usually it's, uh, Recover, Calm Mind, Psy Shock, and then Focus Blast, or Thunder, or whatever else. Uh, the other option that they run in lower tiers is, like, a Trick Room Life Orb set, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the Z-Move user on Poex team, I'm assuming is most likely the Reuni or the Zygarde, because I would assume that it's AV, uh, it pretty much has to be AV Bulu to help with Lele, uh, since Mawile's not a good Lele check at all. Also, uh, for Ashgren, for Coco, Defensive Lando most likely, and probably Scarf Gren. That'd be my guess looking at Poex team. Alright, so all that out of the way, we'll hop right in and get into the battle. Turn 1, we have the Keldeo lead on the Zygarde. Poex probably not going to want to stay in here, potentially get burned. So this hopefully will be the turn right away where BTB could get off the nice HP poison on the Bulu. And BOW! There it is. Nice 75, nice HP poison on that bitch. Alright, so now uh, BTB is obviously going to double out because there's no way Poek will stay in. So uh, Poek's two options here are to go back into Zygarde or go into Mawile. So BTB goes Heatran because he's really afraid of letting the Mawile back in. But Poek makes the better play of going to Zygarde because it covered this, the HP Poison again. It also covered the Heatran switch. So that's a very good double by Poek. Um, now BTB is going to be forced out here probably into his own Bulu, I would assume. That's like that's the Zygar check on this. I know it's not the like the best Zygar check ever though, because uh Steelium Z has been getting a little more common since uh Bulu's become like the the most common Zygar check in the game, like AV Bulu, along with Defensive Lando. But on teams without Defensive Lando, they normally resort to like Clef or AV Bulu to check Zygarde. And Steel Z uh, just destroys both of them. So it, that's a really cool side I like that. Uh, but yeah, I'd say BTB's kind of forced into the tap of Bulu right now. And then if Poek has a move to hit the Bulu, he could go for it here. Otherwise, he could double out on the Bulu to potentially Mawile. I think getting Mawile in as many times as possible is Poek's way of winning this game. Especially if it has a move that could uh, chunk the Heatran. Which we don't know. Like, even Knockoff... Heatran's Z move, but Knockoff will still do a sizable chunk. And the fact that Heatran doesn't get leftovers recovery means that it's, like like I said, it's not going to be able to switch in very often. Even to unboosted Knockoffs, like it's not going to take those well at all from a Mawile. So I think like right here, Poek doubling into Mawile would be a really cool play. There's no heat way Heatran stays in and clicks a fire move. That that one, that move is not happening. So he goes Landorus um, on, yeah, on Bulu from BTB. Like I said, I think Poek's better play was to go into Mawile there. Um, but... Now, like I said, this this Landers pretty much has to be defensive, uh, I would assume. And the Gren should be the Scarfer. Like, I know he's got a Bulu for Zygarde, but any other physical attacker, like, think about, like... I guess he's got the Reuniclus for, like, Low Punny, too. I don't know. This could probably be Scarf on Poe's side. I'm not positive, though. It's either Scarf this or it's Scarf Gren. I'm trying to think if he needs Scarf Lando, or if he needs... Okay, so it is Rocks. Most likely not Scarf, unless it's uh, Rock Scarf. 
But yeah, at first I was thinking he needed this for stuff like like low bunny and stuff like that. But he has the reuni for that. He's got the bulu for Zygarde. So this doesn't necessarily have to be defensive. This could definitely be scarf. Um, like a even like maybe like a bulky scarf to help versus pincer. Um, but yeah, because we saw rocks, I'm assuming it's not. Uh, now BTB goes Zapdos, and we'll probably just defog here. As Poet could try and take advantage of this, but it doesn't really have much for Zapdos to be honest. Uh, I guess Reuniclus, yeah, Reuniclus is the play because um, like you don't, in theory, you don't mind getting Parrot because it's your slowest shit anyway. But we all know that Parrot is a balanced mechanic, so this is actually the win condition. So get, it getting Parrot, like you don't want anything else in your on your team in against Zapdos. But you don't really want this parrot either, just because you know that in the most crucial time, you'll get full parrot and it'll lose you the game. So, but yeah, this probably should force out BTB, because if Poet Call Mines, it's in a bad situation. He just stays in and fishes for hacks like the trash player that he is, and Poet Psychics. <laughs> Alright, I'm joking. I know BTB, you're going to be watching this, so I'm, I'm joking, I swear. But yeah, now uh, BTB's low on his Zapdos. Like, Zapdos is really good, but... It's not needed to check anything in particular outside of maybe Bulu, but he's got other ways to play around Bulu. I don't agree with letting this take the Psychic, though. That is, and that's a lot of damage. I'm assuming that this might be, like, Life Orb? Or, like, at least Offensive Reuni, because I don't think... There's no way that Zapdos will do, um... There's no way Zapdos would take 66 from a Psychic from Defensive Reuniclus. So I'm assuming this is some sort of Offensive set. And we see that still does a lot, because this is AV Bulu. That does a lot to AV Bulu. Um, four, yeah, 40 to AV, that's, that's a decent amount. I mean, look at that. Yeah, they got the stats. They've got a shit ton of special attack. But yeah, I don't necessarily agree with go staying in with Zapdos the first turn, because if Reuniclus did call mind, you're in a bit more of an issue. And if um, if it's like if it psychics you, now you're going to have a harder time switching into the uh, Bulu. Whereas, like, Zapdos, yeah, Zapdos would have been nice to keep it outside of, like, Mawile Sucker Punch range, possibly, later on, but, yeah. I don't know, I just don't think you needed to let it take the hit. We have Fire Double into the Heatran on the Mawile. That was a really hot double. I guess it also covers the Reuniclus staying in and Psychic King again, but I don't think that, yeah, I mean, Poek was probably never going to make that play. Uh, especially because if, if BTB calc that that was offensive uh, Reuniclus, then I'm sure either, like, Horn Leech or Woodhammer would knock that thing out of the park. Like, not kill it, but it would do a shit ton. And Pollock wants to keep that thing healthy. Because, like I said, that's a huge threat to BTB's team. So, we're going to see a double into the Zygarde. As we probably get, yeah, rocks up. Like I said, this train is rocks. Uh, and now we'll probably go back into Bulu. He goes Kartana on the... S what the... F <laughs> BT God. BT God. BT Goat. Yeah, change the name right now. BTG, baby. <laughs> Obviously, he wasn't expecting that, but, uh, yeah, that play was really hot. Um, I'm pretty sure he was just scouting for Iron Tail because the thing is, like, BTB already showed uh, Bulu as the switch in, so if Poek had, was, like, banded, or if, if Poek had any move to hit the Bulu, it would have went for it there. That's why he went Kartana, and that would probably also cover a double uh, on the Bulu into, like, um, for example, like, into, like, Mawile. So this would cover the Mawile double, it would cover uh, the Zygarde. I guess I, I, he's not. He was definitely not expecting Sludge Wave. I could tell you this much. But yeah. All right. So we, Kartana gets a nice terrain boosted Leaf Blade on the Landorus. It does a bunch. Um, and yeah, I guess BTB. Like, if this is a normal defensive Landorus, he could stay in and just Leaf Blade it twice to kill it. But this Kartana is looking really nice. Um, and HP Fire Lando has been more of a thing uh, recently. I guess. Mostly because Kartana is so broken. So, looking at Poek's team, he's pretty weak to Kartana and he's pretty weak to Scizor. Like, very weak to both of them. So, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this Landris is HP Fire. Uh, either way, I wouldn't stay in because you don't kill the Landris anyway. Uh, it is HP Fire. So, yeah, Carping Gun sucks. That was a big, that could have easily cleaned late game. But, um, I guess either way, like, you got the damage down, so, like, rocks are never going up for Poic, most likely, and he doesn't have a switch into Scald because the blue got hit with the HP Poison turn one. But, yeah, I, I'm not the biggest fan of staying in that turn. Um, I guess what BTB was expecting was, like, okay, well, if Poic's, like, a normal defensive Lando, he can't do much to me, and I could just leap play twice and kill it, which obviously makes sense, but, um... Yeah, HP Fire the Tech. I've used that a few times. More on Scarf Lando. If I'm weak to, like, Kartana on teams, or if I'm weak to uh, Scizor, 
either one, like HP Fire, and I have other good Zygarde checks, right? HP Fire is a good option on Scarf Lando. Um, I guess also on defensive here too, uh, which, I, yeah, I... It makes sense, because like I said, like, look at a plus two Scizor to Poex team. It's very, it's incredibly threatening uh, if, if he didn't have HP Fire on this Lando. So I understand that uh, team building call. But now BTB will just click Scald, because I'm pretty sure Scald gets a kill. <laughs> I think the only thing that I would switch in is like a Greninja, and what is Greninja doing to Keldeo? Uh, although, like, we saw Leftovers on the Lander, so this is confirmed defensive, right? So the, the Greninja is pretty much guaranteed Scarf. But even then, like, Scarf Gunk doesn't do much, and Keldeo walls the rest of Scarf Gren's set, so... Yeah, Scald was free there. It got a, it got a kill. Uh, now Poex going to be forced into the Reuniclus, maybe? I don't know if Bulu will be able to take one after Rocks. Um, I would assume because it took like 75 the first time it came in, right? Yeah, so now Bulu's at 20. Does it take a spec Scald from 20? I mean, Keldeo's strong as hell. I don't know. Like, if anything, it's a roll. But if it's a... Like, BTB's obviously calcing, right? And Poek knows that it's specs. He wouldn't have set this, sent this out if it was just going to die. So, I'm sure BTB's calcing now. And if even if it's a roll, he's not going to risk it. Because Keldeo gets a kill every single time it comes in. Uh, unless this Bulu gets health. So, for that reason, I'd always go Heatran here. And because he's offensive Heatran, he's guaranteed to outspeed the Bulu the next turn. And... You prevent the Bulu from uh, getting Horn Leech recovery. So you could just, right here, you just go Bulu, or you just go Tran. You prevent the Bulu from hit, from healing up, and then Keldeo will continue to be able to get kills every time it comes in. So, uh, yeah, if he superpowers not end of the world, it's not going to kill you, and you're going to be able to outspeed and kill him the next turn. But what would be pretty bad is if Bulu was able to Horn Leech something and get a lot of health back. So, yeah, I think Tran's definitely the play. Um, Poex thinking this through. I think... His play is just to click Horn Leech uh, and hope that BTB goes for roll. He would hammers, but like Horn Leech would have killed Keldeo. I don't, know, I don't know why he would hammered. Maybe would hammer to kill Zapdos. But even then, I would have preferred the health on this so he could switch into, or so that he could take a Scald again. That'd be, or at least that'd be the my thought process behind wanting to, uh, to Horn Leech. Uh, he trans in. He trans will click Fire Move. Um, if he's afraid of missing, he could click Z. And it would probably... Yeah, Zygarde was the obvious switch from Poek. This will still do a lot, though. Z Inferno Overdrive from Trans, like, super strong. Yeah, you see it does half. But the Grassy Terrain's working uh, on favor of the Zygarde right here. So he's able to stay healthy. Uh, we saw last time, this is either a mixed Zygarde or a special Zygarde. So BTB's in a bad spot because he has no proper switch into this. And it's almost like Guess Right or Lose Amon. So... I guess what Zygarde will either do here is click Ground Move or click Poison Move. Uh to either catch the Bulu or kill the Heat or, or hit what's in front of you, which would be the Heatran. So I guess Poison Ground, like, maybe Sack Zapdos is the play. He just stays in and just go. That does a lot, too. I'm pretty sure that Specs, yeah, it's Specs Zygarde, the nice core enforcer. <laughs> so yeah, obviously he was expecting a mid-ground play into either, like, Keldeo Zygarde or the, or the uh, Zapdos. That's the only reason you core enforcer. Because, like, the two obvious plays were staying in with Tran or going to Bulu on Earth Power, or either Thousand Arrows or Earth Power. We didn't know if this was Specs yet. We didn't know if it was um, Life Orb, if it was Mixed. We didn't know what it was. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure that damage confirms it's Specs. So, BTB has a free switch into the Bulu here. So, Bo Poa could double into... Um, no, Poa can't double. I, no, BTB could just stay in and click uh, Magma... Or no, he missed the Magma. Ah, yeah, that sucks because if, if Heatran hit that Magma Storm, the Zygarde would be dead because it'd be locked into Core Enforcer and it would be trapped in. But now Poex obviously not going to stay in because this is Specs Lock, so he's going to switch out, right? And what's his switch into Heatran? Maybe like Gren? I guess Poek's going to go Gren and BTB should go Bulu. Um, but the same thing is Poek might be able to beat this Heatran 1v1 now because it missed the first Magma Storm, so he might just stay in. Either way, I think BTB's best play is going to Bulu and getting that free turn. Um, yeah. And Poek, a fire play for Poek would be maybe going Mawile, but I don't see BTB staying in and letting this take another mag or letting it take another Core Enforcer when you have something that's immune to the move. And like I said, I'm 99% I'm sure that's Specs, so, uh, it's gonna be locked into that anyway. Uh, and then also... BTB, um, what was I talking about before? Oh yeah, so the core enforcer on the Tran, like, I agree with Poex play because I thought like BTB should just sack Zapdos there because it's at forty percent and doesn't really check anything anymore. So I, if I was him, I'd have sacked Zap because 
You still want the Bulu for the Gren. And kind of for the Reuniclus. Because like I said, it's AV and it's health. Or like, it's an AV Bulu and it's pretty healthy. So it could eat any hit from the Reuniclus. And if it's offensive Reuni, he's going to be able to do a, like a shit ton with Woodhammer. So I felt like BTB should have just gone Zapdos and sacked it. He also wants uh, Heatran to deal with the Mawile. So um, double into Keldeo was super fire there on the Mawile. That was a great play. Because... Kelio gets a kill here, but the, the problem is it'll have to hit a Hydro, because I'm sure Skull doesn't kill Mega Mawile, but that's still, this is like the best play BTV could make to catch the Mawile, because it guarantees a kill if you hit your move. Um, and I think, like, yeah, Hydro is definitely coming out from BTB, he's just, and he's probably crossing his finger, he probably shut his laptop because he doesn't want to see if this move connects, but, um, yeah. Definitely, definitely, um, it's funny how Specs Keldeo, everyone says, is terrible, and it's putting in so much work this game. It already pretty much destroyed the Bulu, got a kill on the Lando, is going to get another kill here if it connects. Um, yeah, and Poek doesn't have a play. Like, like, Mawile's, like I said, Mawile was, like, his key to, like, winning this game is weakening everything with Mawile, because BTB really didn't have any sort of, uh, counterplay to the Mawile, but, um... Yeah, I guess, like, he did a really good job of doubling into something to pressure the Mawile every time it wanted to come in. So that's just really good playing by BTB. He, uh, pl yeah, he's playing around the Mawile incredibly well. Uh, and now, yeah, Poex thinking, because like I said, he's got to sack something. Uh, I guess he could sack Bulu because it's super low. And, and the Bulu's almost dead to rocks. I would just sack Bulu. But he just is like, please d let me dodge this Hydro Pump and just dies instead. Which, which yeah, I don't know. I guess Poex saw that as like an opening, but I don't... Why why would you... I don't know. I don't know. What's Trosco saying when you have to hit Hydro? Uh, dude, that was a fire play he made into Keldeo. That guaranteed him a kill. Uh, that was the best play that BTB had. Uh... What do you mean you don't get it? Why would you... But, like, okay, when Keldeo's in on... When Keldeo's in on the Mawile, what are you going to do? Switch out and then have something take, a pl like, a Mega Mawile hit? Like, you, you have to stay in and click Hydra at that point. Like, I don't understand what he's saying. That was, a, that was a fire series of plays by BTB. And like I said, one of the hardest things on a Poex team for him to switch into never got a move off. So that's that just shows how good BTB's played this game up to this point. So, um... Yeah, they're talking about the thing. They're talking about the play here. That was a fantastic play by BTB. Now, okay, so he goes Bulu, right? So he's pretty much saying, "Please, I dare you to hit this. I dare you to hit this Hydro Pump." And wait, okay, so Trosco's saying doubling into Keldeo is bad. No, doubling into Keldeo is fire because it guaranteed a kill. Well, not guaranteed. It gave you eighty percent chance at a kill. If if you okay, I don't agree with Zapdos either. I would have gone Tran again because it keeps Bulu from healing, and then I would have Scalded. But, um, he's saying he could go Tran instead of Keld. No, but Tran was bad because if he goes Tran, it just lets in Zygarde. And like I said before, he doesn't have switch-ins to spec Zygarde. He's just got to, like, pray that he predicts right. So, going Tran on the Mawile was never the play. Going Keldeo was because that guaranteed you a kill if you hit. Whereas going Tran did not. It, it put you in a bad situation because it let the Zygarde in for free. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, I really agree with the Keldia play from BTB. I don't necessarily agree with discharging the Bulu. <laughs> I think you, like I said, uh, I think I mentioned before, the Zapdos is defog HP Ice. I would have definitely clicked HP Ice there because you want to try and keep the Bulu inside of Scald Range as much as possible. Uh, so, yeah, and I also wouldn't have gone into Zapdos on the sack uh, anyway. I would have gone into Heatran, like I said, to make sure that this thing doesn't really heal outside of Scald Range. But uh, either way, he's in a good spot. So now the Zygarde comes out. And he's in another set of 50-50s. Um, I think... The thing is, alright, you probably don't want to sack Zygarde, because Zygarde will eat a hit from the from the Reuniclus, and because it's banded, we'll shit on it with Outrage or with Thousand Arrows. So you probably don't want to switch that. BTB um, predicts Poek right there on the Earth Power, which is really risky, because, like, Bulu's really good. I guess BTB at this point knows that the Gren Greninja probably has to be Scarf. So... It won't be able to lock into any move to beat the whole team anyway. So, like, even if he lost, Bulu probably wasn't end of the world. But, like I said, Bulu was still incredibly nice uh, for... It, it would eat any hit from the Reuniclus and shit on it with a wood hammer. So, uh, in that sense, it would have been nice to keep. 
but either way, he gets the prediction right, so it just puts him that much farther ahead. And I think that um, BTB is going to have a really hard time losing this, especially because he's taunt on trance, so he could stop any sort of call mines or recovery from the Reuniclus. Uh, the one thing is, like, BTB probably wants to be in on the Reuniclus with either the Zygarde or the Heatran, because, or even the Kel. This is probably the one thing you don't want the Reuniclus in on. Because you're not going to be able to kill it, and you're potentially going to give it set up. Whereas, like, uh, Keldeo Hydro Pump, any move from Zygarde, or Heatran has Taunt. Uh, Reuniclus is going to have a really hard time setting up on any of those mons. Uh, but it probably could... No, but it was offensive. Like, it can't even really set up on Bulu. That's the thing. Like, I don't know. I don't think Reuni could win at this point. He's got... Like, every mon hits Reuniclus too hard for it to reliably set up. Except for now with the terrain gone, it might have been the time uh, to try it, but... Yeah, obviously, the, whatever the set is, it can't win at this point. Otherwise, he would have tried to go for it now, because I think that was his best shot. Um, Poet goes into Greninja. Like I said, this is most likely Scarf. Ice Beam, I, it's Stab Ice Beam. I'm pretty sure it would kill even AV Bulu. Although, Scarf, I, I've switched Bulu into Scarf Grand Ice Beams before, and I'm surprised at how little it does. But I'm pretty sure from 54, it would still kill. Gunk is the other option. So he goes, he's trying to cover both of those. And Greninja spikes... Uh, this could be bad if, I guess if it's not, if it's like, okay, if it's Ice Beam, let me think of what it would have to be. Ice Beam, Extra Sensory, Gunk Shot, Ice Beam, or yeah, Hydro Pump. If it's all of the, if it's plus spikes, so if it's a five move Protein Grind, it could be problematic. Otherwise, and like I said, it's most likely Scarf anyway, so I don't think it's going to matter. It pretty much had to be Scarf. Um, Earth Power, now, okay, we have Doc disconnecting here. Oh, what the hell? Oh, we missed, missed, missed the nice kill on Bulu. So, BTB definitely wanted to hit that there. See, but now we're going for the setup on Reuniclus on the Heatran, which you'd have to assume probably has Taunt, because why would you ever run a Heatran without Taunt and have it lose to Toxapex? Uh, missed the Focus Blast. I don't think that matters. Even if it killed the Tran, the Reuniclus was the last threat. All he would have to do after this is go into Keldeo and click Scald, and it would have been game over. Unless he got froze, I guess. But, um... Yeah, the, the Focus Blast miss didn't really matter there. All he had to do uh, was taunt the Reuniclus, and it was pretty much the end of the game there. Goes for the Earth Power to make sure he doesn't miss. It picks off the Gren, who had to lock into Rock Slide and attempt to flinch everything down. Um, and yeah, great game by my man BTB. Poek played pretty well, too. I just, I'll be honest, I wasn't a fan of his team. We saw that the taunt came out on the um, attempted Trick Room. So it was like a Trick Room offensive Reuniclus, which I'm not the biggest fan of because, like, I mean, Reuni has such good defensive capabilities already. In, in, like, checking stuff like, like, Medi and Low Bunny and a few other, like, pr you know, pretty common mons. Whereas, like, I feel like the defensive sets off your, you a lot more than something like 3 Attack Trick Room, which is, I'm assuming, is what it was. And then also the Zygarde set. I'm not digging that Zygarde set at all. Specs is, um, it's something. I guess it tr could catch people off guard, but in terms of, like, effectiveness, like, overall, definitely, uh, there's, like, if you want to hit Bulu, run Iron Tail on Banded. Uh, you can run Steelium Z. Like, there's like I, I just feel like Specs is overshadowed by every other set. So I wasn't a huge fan of Poex's team. Uh, I like BTB's team, and it did really well here. And he won. He played very well. They, they, both players overall played good. So it was nice to see a fairly clean game overall as well. So we see BTB on the uh, Stark Sharks uh, t getting first blood against the Cryonicles. They're now up 1-0. So uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, Ultra Balls out. Peace.